So I'm going to kick it off, um, and, and this is going to be fun. So some of you are like, this isn't like a full sermon. If you'll lean in, take down notes, there's going to be revelation, takeaways, scriptures, and such. So uh, this is a fun summer story for me. Uh, I was a kid, probably 11 or 12, and I took up skateboarding. Where's all the skateboarders at? Anybody who attempted skateboarding? How many guys wanted to skateboard, but you were terrible at it? Come on, wave at me. Okay, how many guys were just not coordinated to handle the skateboard? Okay, wow, that's... Uh, considerable amount of people. Okay, so uh, my mom had prayed. She, she said, hey, I'm going to pray. Psalms 91 protection over my kids every day. My mom is a prayer warrior, y'all. Where's all the praying mamas at? Come on, the prayers of a righteous man, a woman availeth much. Amen. So my mom prayed for protection. She said, but listen, you have free will. You can act reckless on that skateboard, or you can do what you need to do, and handle that skateboard right and properly. And I said, absolutely. And so uh, she had prayed over me. Again, I'm here in free will, but I'm also uh, loving the adventure of summer. So I tried to go down a really steep driveway that my friend's dad had on my stomach on the skateboard. And so I wasn't riding it properly. I'm hearing my mom praying like heaven, touch earth, protect my son, God. But I'm on my face because of free will, making a choice I shouldn't. And I hit a very large rock and the skateboard stopped and I kept going. It was bad. So not only did I scrape up my entire side, my neck, but it was my entire side of my face from my forehead all the way down. I used to have a chin. I now have this beard. Somebody's like, what do you look like without that beard? I'm like, I have a hand of the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot shaking hands in the middle at my chin, and it says believe. Okay, not true. I don't have any tattoos under here. Uh, but anyways, I tore up my entire face, like emergency room, hospital, wrapped it up, told my parents, skin grafts, plastic surgery, your son's going to be deformed. And my mom in that room said, God, even though he went outside of that Psalms 91 moment, I thank you for your goodness. Your grace, and this is my prayer, that you would replace skin, that you would heal him. And my mom, doctors would walk in and say, we need to do something, you need to hold up, I'm praying for my boy. And so my mom was laying hands on my face, and I'm like, ah, it hurt, but she's praying for me. And, and two weeks later, as they were taking the wrapping undone, the doctors looked at my mom and said, we don't know what happened, but this is like a miracle. He's not gonna need skin grafts, he's not gonna need plastic surgery, and y'all, I mean, I'm okay today, amen. Okay, okay. Amen, okay. Too good to not believe, yeah. amen. But in the middle of those free will moments, how many of y'all are grateful for the goodness and mercy of God that chases after you even in the midst of poor choices? So anyways, Amen. That's part of my story. So good, so good. And in that vein, would you join us in welcoming the rest of yes, our team it. to the stage right now? Could you welcome the rest of our team as they come on out come on and out. take a seat? We are going to ask Pastor Oric Duke to join us right now. Could you welcome you him as here. he comes? Come on, give it up for Pastor Oric. Yeah. He has a word and a special moment of revelation to share today. And I believe it's not only going to lift your spirits today, but I think it'll also make you go, well, okay, actually, yeah, I could walk away with that. So today we are going to leave you with things to walk away with. And our prayer is that on each and every one, you can either relate to the moment, not relate to the moment, or say, noted, noted. I will either make sure not to step into that situation or... I'm going to allow God to make that shift in my thinking as well. So welcome, Pastor Oric. Pastor Oric, amazing, married to Aisha, four incredible kids. Pastor Oric's on our executive team over development. He's also our legacy pastor. You're a gift to this house, the Nigerian sensation. Yeah. Give it up for Pastor Oric. So I can't believe you're going to make me tell this story. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all like going to the beach for, in the summer? Yeah, the beach. Few of us, yeah. So last summer, we had an opportunity to actually go to see Aisha, my wife's parents, in Florida. Okay. And so first day out, we take the kids. We find a nice beach, family beach. We take the kids out there. And then we have a rental car. And so it seemed wise to keep all of our money, our cards. Some of you know where this story is going, right? In the car, take the, the key and put it in a Ziploc bag. Okay. Right? And the idea was that we were going to go in the ocean, the big ocean, right? The Atlantic Ocean, and uh, put the key in our pocket. Oh. Right? Yeah. And because it's in a Ziploc bag and it's in our pocket, when we're done, we'll find the key and we'll, we'll head out. Wow. Right? 
Well, so, so what happens is we jump in the water and we're playing and we're having a good time. The bag is in your pocket. Bag is yeah. in Aisha's pocket. But it's safe. But it's safe. Because it's in a Ziploc. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, I didn't buy one of those waterproof bags because you can just put it in Ziploc, it's right? Fine, guys. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so 30 minutes in, I see something float away and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And then we just keep on playing, right? Ignore right. <laughs> that. But like, it was in the pocket, right? It's in a Ziploc bag. I Couldn't it was go anywhere. Fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, an hour later, hour 15 later, we're like, okay, let's pack up and go. Um, where are the keys? No, you had the keys. No, you had the keys. And so this is the moment where the temptation comes to panic, to be anxious. So your mind starts playing tri like tricks on you. I'm like, I'm never going back to Houston again <laughs> because the next rental car center is an hour and a half away, right? All my money cards, idea, I hear laughter out there. <laughs> Everything is in there. How are we, we're either going to walk for the next 50 days with no food or water with our four kids, right. and our kids are nine, eight, five, and a one-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so, and so I'm like, okay, I have a choice. I can either go down that road, or I can start to trust God. And the th second thought I had was, this is a good teaching moment for my kids. It is. And so I said, okay, Aisha and, uh, and, and our, our little ones, Go rest. And I took the two boys with me and I said, let's have a Bible study. Yes, let's have a Bible study. And I said, let's pray. Let's pray. And let's walk up and down this beach and we'll find the keys. And so we start praying. We get to the lifeguard station, no keys. We meet a guy who has a metal detector and he, he looks in the water and he's like, I'm sorry, your key's long gone. And he's like, he looks Love out and, guy. yeah, exactly. He looks out, five second pause in the horizon, your key is long gone. You're like, kids, don't believe that. <laughs> exactly. Believe. I'm like, come on, God's got us. So an hour and a half later, we still don't have the keys. And then I'm like, okay, um, boys, go rest, because they've been out in the sun for this while. And in that moment, I look half, an, half a mile down the road and I see a tower. And I, I honestly felt a prompting to just walk over there and go find out. And so I walk over there. And I, and I see a lady there, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know, when you start to tell this story, like you, you, there's already embarrassment, right? And I'm like, hey, did you happen to find a Ziploc bag with keys in it? And then she gave me that look. So you're the one <laughs> who went swimming with your keys in a Ziploc bag. Yes, we have it. Yes, you can clap, because that's how I felt. And, um, and the cool thing is, she's actually here today. <laughs> she's not here. That's oh, not you true. brought her? <laughs> we thank her from afar. Yeah, yes, yes. And so I make my way back to my kids, and then I have this look on my face, because I don't want to give it away, right? I want everyone to still go through the pain, right? So I'm like, <laughs> guys, I don't know how we're going to get back hey, to Houston. How many y'all would do that? Come on, how many y'all would like, I'm going to teach them a lesson yes. today, Aisha? <laughs> and then uh, my kids look at me and like, Dad, you found the keys. Quit playing. And so we found the keys, happy to say we came back to Houston, we made it back, thankful for, back, for that. But here's the, here's the lesson. Here's the one thing we can take away from this. Psalm 37 verse 23 says that the Lord orders the steps of a good man. Yeah. And, and wait for it, it says he delights in the details of his lives. Yeah, so good. I love that because it says even when I lose my keys in a Ziploc bag, yeah. God still cares about the details of my life. Yeah, that's a good word. And I believe that will encourage someone here today. Yeah. And so we made it home. And the one, the one word, if you're writing down notes, the one thing you can write is God guides us. So no matter how difficult the situation is, no matter how lost it seems, no matter, sometimes there's people who will tell you, your keys are long gone. God is still working. So good. To bring, working things out for your good. That's so good. I love it. Give Pastor Oric a hand. That's amazing. I love... I think sometimes in our humanity, and, and I want you to add to this as well, but I think sometimes that verse when it says that he cares about every detail, I think in our humanity we say, but not this little detail, or he only cares about the big things. I mean, he created the whole universe, right? No, he cares about the intricacies of our life, down to Ziploc bags with keys in them. Uh, there was a, when we were home, I couldn't find my wallet one day, which is a reoccurring. One day, it was just once. Just once. It's a reoccurring <laughs> A day. <laughs> Once a, Once a day, day. Okay. or so. <laughs> it's fine. Go back to the story, darling. And our, our fox is three, and uh, we find remotes, iPods, iPads. He throws them in the trash. He's a very tidy little guy. That happens in your house as well? Yeah, he throws everything away. He doesn't try to eat it. He throws it away, uh, which is amazing. But we've lost, you know, everything. And so I couldn't find my wallet, and I was so frustrated. I had to go, and I stopped, and I said, Holy Spirit, I need your help. You care about the little intricacies of my life. And I felt this little nudge to go check 
upstairs in their playroom inside of this play box. And I'm thinking, there's no way. I walk all the way up there, y'all. I open that play box and there is my wallet. So I gave God praise. And then I went and was like, Fox, you threw my thing away. (laughs) It's true. It's so good. I love it because I think the tendency for us because of what you just shared about the details and what you even added is that so often we find ourselves in these moments and we say, God doesn't care about those things. I'm not going to stop and pray. God, it's not that significant. But those are the moments that God does care to show himself yep, yep. to be our good father that cares about every single thing that matters to our hearts. Good. God never intended for the Duke family to walk all that way back from the Amen. beach. And he will provide wisdom in that moment to give the solution that we need. So that is so and encouraging. I think, and I think, yes, um, I think that the key thing too is in the moment, it can be difficult to focus on God. Yeah. Because guess what? There's so much going on that I need to figure out. Absolutely. But having the right perspective, I think, is important. So and I love how he said the key thing. Well done. <laughs> All right. Give it up for Pastor Oric. He's amazing. <laughs> and the key thing. That was perfect. I love it. Perfect. It was so good. All right. We're going to invite to the stage our youth director, Mr. Johnny Lovender. Come on, kid, over here. I see you in your infrared force. I see you today. I think I'm just copying you today. That's what my daughter said. <laughs> uh, we want to introduce Johnny. Johnny's a gift to this house, him and his amazing wife, Sydney. Sydney was up here leading worship just a little bit ago. Give it up for Sydney. He's part of our Hope City worship team. Johnny and Sydney, for those of you who don't know, sixth through 12th grade, junior high, high school students. They are our youth directors. They're amazing. And our youth are making some waves. How many people, how many youth have been saved in the past nine weeks? Wow. Um, I think upwards of 45 students. Isn't that incredible? That's unreal. So for those of you that have heard us announcing week after week, we are having weekly services on Thursdays and all of our announcements about summer camp. This is who is leading your young teenagers, and they are incredible. So we're excited excited for you to share today. All right, so share your story. So uh, I just went to Colorado. I just flew in last night. And, okay, I'm from Houston, like born and raised. I'm, I'm Texan. Come on. So let me ask this question. Are there any mountain people here? Any hikers? Like two. That's what I thought. I see one. What about below sea level people, at sea level? That's me, okay? So I stay near the ocean, wherever the ocean is. I'm comfortable. Um, but there was 11 of us, and we decided to go hiking. And, you know, it was, um, it was tough. It was tough because I kind of think that we're just not, Houstonians are not built for the mountains. You yeah. know, I just kind of came to this conclusion. Did you have hiking shoes on? There were, no one was interested, yeah. so clearly. Yeah. Like, oh. So, and, and, and I mean, really, I think I figured this out because we had to stop probably, I think I lost count, 10 times on the way because the first 25 seconds, everyone's gassed. Yeah. Everyone's gassed. First 25 yeah. seconds. And we continually stopped. And then there's like the mountain people that think they're, you know, way better than us. And, and we're stopping and I see them and I want to keep going. I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm in shape. You know, like trying to like, and they just zoom. I, I really think one lady lapped us by the time we got to the top. It was terrible. Um, but I found myself a little frustrated because I, I, I'm not in good shape at all. But um, we stopped so many times. And sometimes I just wanted to put my head down and keep going. Like I just was like, let's get a pace. Let's get a, ri- you know, just a whole rhythm and let's keep going. And that just uh, didn't happen. And continually, 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 we would stop. And here's what I found is I found myself so frustrated having to wait for my family. And I felt like in that moment, God just revealed to me that I can be so focused in life on my progress and where I'm going, like the mountain that I'm climbing, that I can miss really what's the most important part, which is the people that God's placed right next to me. Wow. Because hiking, it was for the purpose of being with my family. That's a good word. I love what you said that's so focused on your progress. Yeah. You kind of forget about the process. You forget also about the people that you're connected to. And I think for me, it can come down to just being me focused. And I don't know what the mountain you're climbing is in your life. I know that there's godly, ambitious people here in this room, and maybe it's a a startup, maybe it's a business, maybe it's the next promotion, maybe it's a relationship, but there's something that you're just trying to achieve. And what I love about the gospel is that it 
always recenters us on being others focused and not me focused. So good. And Galatians 6, 2 says, this is how we fulfill the law of Christ. Like th this is how we follow Jesus, carry each other's burdens. Yeah. And I believe if you're here today and you're moving way too fast to even stop and help other people wait on your way, then you're not going at God's pace for your life. Wow, it's a good word. And even with that, you know, the most important purpose of any of our life, at any given moment, it's always gonna be attached to people. It's always gonna be attached to people. That's the number one thing. And I think whenever we do that and we step into slowing down, because it's in the slowing down moments that we can really recenter, because here's the truth, that there's no mountain in our life that's comparable to heaven, right? The real destination is eternity for all of us. And that's where we're actually headed. And what I love about this concept of the gospel is that the question that we should be asking ourselves is not how fast can I get to the mountain, but who can I take with me? That's so good. Yeah, so I, I mean, I really think whenever us as a church, if we can receive this, I think God's blessing rests on others focused people. And if we can get to that space and place, I think God's gonna take care of all the mountains that you might be worried about. And you, you just focus on getting people with you. That's so good. So good. So good. I love it because I think so often the thing that we do miss in life is what is our mission for today? And too often our mission for today is the task that we thought we were supposed to accomplish today. But ultimately the mission is Jesus and loving people. And so I love that because we are, we, are, we are heading to a place ultimately, but who are we taking with us? Who are you noticing along the way that needs the encouragement, the hope, the joy that's inside of you? Because how many of you know busyness will keep you from seeing those people along the way? Amen. Such I, a good word. And I love the quote, tying the better together part. And we've said this multiple times, that if you want to go somewhere fast, then go alone. And that's kind of the humanity side of us. It's like, okay, just get out of the way. Let me handle it. Or, I'm sorry, you're so slow. I'm driven. Yep. But the truth is, if you want to go somewhere far, we have to choose to go together. And so you taking those moments, even though they were a little frustrating, taking those moments to laugh with family, taking those moments to actually spend time with family that, you weren't, uh, that you're not normally able to be around, to take that moment. And there is grace for the pace. And then along the journey, there are people connected to our purpose. Yeah. So, such a good word. So good. Love it. Give it up for John. Y'all, this is who's taking care of our young people. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole word. It's incredible. Awesome. Well, could you join us in welcoming the Nefs to the stage? We the have Nefs. Pastor Matt and Pastor Desiree as well. Join them as they come this way. They are new to our team this year. But not new to our lives. So, Matt, no. uh, I've, ta I've talked about this for a long time. Uh, in, in ministry, but also in life, not doing life alone, uh, transparency, accountability, and honesty is key uh, for longevity. And so uh, I don't travel alone. Matt actually has traveled with me on the road for over nine years. Uh, he plays keys, and his last name's Neff, so whenever he bothers me, I'm always like, that's a Neff of that. Uh, I always, it's a classic. It's so good. I feel like that's Every pretty time. fun. It's great. Uh, pastor Matt is our discipleship pastor and uh, came on the team here a few months ago, and you guys are an incredible addition to the church. Two amazing kids, Isaac, who's 19, which is unreal, and Hannah, who's 16, and on the road. She's driving a little bit here and there, which is a little scary, but I love that she's learning Houston driving, because Houston driving is just, if you don't know what the Audubon is, mm -hmm. it's pretty similar. If you can drive here, you can drive anywhere. anywhere yeah. So this is the best. But, yeah, that's true, that's true. So Matt is a gift to the house, and uh, man, we have so many stories from the road. You and I were talking uh, probably a year and a half ago, uh, similar stories with vacations, and, and I've actually shared some of this story from our perspective in sermons before, but I love this story. Can you go ahead and share what's on your heart? Absolutely. So we love to go to the beach as well for summer break. It feels like I can re refresh and reset. And so we're driving from Ohio uh, 10 hours to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which is uh, it's a good spot. And um, Myrtle Beach is like, it's, a, it's about the style of Galveston. Yeah. But it's also nicknamed Murder Beach. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's not... Yeah, it's not a little quite. dangerous in some spots. It's Galveston, good, you don't, we don't have cool nicknames like that. No, 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 it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Super intense. Um, <laughs> So, so our, you know, the kids are little, uh, Isaac and Hannah, I think they're seven and four at the time, and um, it's a 10-hour car ride. We get there late, and in the morning, we're just super excited to go. We're like, let's, let's go. We're here. We drove all this way, all this planning. 
So, but you can't just go to the beach. You can't just like, with kids, you have to have like all these accessories, you know, like, yeah. like tuna sandwiches cut in triangles and Capri Sun and like orange slices. Only and, if oh, this oh. is your wife. She's yeah. in another level. Orange yeah, slices to the beach. So unprepared. Orange oh, no. slices? Orange yeah. slices, yeah. It's uh, real a quick, for orange slices, like the little cuties, like real orange or? yeah, yeah. yeah. Artificial orange Both. slices. With Both. Like the we candy start with, with the, the real, and then if we run out, we go to the imitation. Okay, yeah. okay. Good. That's not true. Good plan. So, thank you. Um, so, uh, we get all loaded up, boogie boards and sunblock and all these other things, and we head out to, um, to the, we're on the 12th floor, we head out to the elevator, which we're on the 12th floor. That's fancy. And it was fancy. It was, uh, they, they called it the penthouse, and they said there was like a helipad somewhere, but I don't know. The penthouse on the Super 8 is still the penthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I was living my best life. And so we're in the elevator. We are ready to go. The kids are super excited. We go from floor 12 to floor 11. The elevator stops. The doors open. People get on. And our kids run out. And we're like, guys, 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 this isn't it. No, wait, hold on, hold on. It gets better. This is just floor 11. We didn't drive forever, 10 hours, to settle at the 11th floor. So 10th floor, 9th floor, almost every time. Oh, the door's open. I must have, I have to run through it. The door's open. I have to go through it. The door's open. I have to go through it. I'm thinking, no, guys, calm down. We, we got you. We're, we're going to make this work. We have this, this beach experience that's so incredible. Yeah. And so, but we just don't want to rush it. We just want to stay and get to the ground floor of the lobby. Doo, ready to go. Then you can go run out. So they were just super excited. So we get there, and it was a great time, great time at the beach, um, had all the accessories, we were fully hydrated, sunblock, it was great, it was a great time. And, I, and I, felt, I felt like the Holy Spirit convicted my heart to say, you know, Matt, you've done that a lot of times in life, where there was an open door, and you just ran through it. You're like, oh, the door's open, I have to, I have to run through it, this must, be, this must be my moment, this must be God, this must be all these other things. And I thought, man, there's so many times where we just take off but in the scripture, it talks about um, uh, Revelations 3.8. It says, I know all, thing, all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. And I felt peace Good. in that moment of like, oh, yeah, Lord. Okay, you're, yeah, you're the author and the finisher of my faith. Um, you're leading God in me. Your Holy Spirit's in me. And um, so many times we, we want to rush it. And, and, and every open door is not a part of your purpose. Yeah. Just because it's an open door doesn't mean I have to go through it. Amen? So with that, um, a pastor friend of mine who, who I love, um, when, when we're talking about being led by the Spirit of God and, and following the Holy Spirit, it's all about peace. It's all about following peace. And so he said it this way, like if it's a business deal, if it's a relationship, maybe somewhere that you're, you have to make a decision on something. Um, he said, just follow peace because sometimes it can feel like you're taking a shower with your socks on. Oh, wow. So it's a weird visual, I know, and I'm sorry for the visual. Nobody's ever done that before. I mean, it depends on where you're at. It happens all the time. Yeah, if it's like yeah. at a sketchy campground. Some, I don't want to get some weird foot issue. Yeah, I'll wear wool keep socks, the socks on, on if I have to. <laughs> Maybe flip flops. But in this instant, that helps my illustration. It's gonna. Most of it feels right, you know. Like, okay, shower with my socks on. Most of it feels right, but you have to realize, okay, this isn't right. This this relationship that I'm about to go in, this this dotted line that I'm about to sign. Something's not sitting right, and follow that piece. So good, because not every, not every opportunity is a God opportunity. Exactly. And exactly. not every door. I actually said this, I think it was last week or the week before, but we pray as a family, God, we don't want to say, do, be a part of, or walk through any door that's not connected to our assignment. Because I don't want to waste time. Because there's no grace on, again, there's good opportunities, but right. we want to wait on the God opportunity. Absolutely. Not absolutely. every single door that opens. How many of you guys have walked through some doors because you kicked the door open? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'll, Versus I'll waiting for God to open the door. Yeah. And I'm not talking about procrastination. Right. I'm talking about waiting on the right door because you guys could have settled for floor 11. Yep. I and mean, they had a vending machine. You could have yeah, eaten pretty onions cool. and right. yeah. An arcade. Hot tamales. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole afternoon and told the kids this is Disney World, right? Like you <laughs> right. could have spun the story. Exactly. But exactly. instead you were waiting for the beach. Yeah. And I love, I love the illustration of the elevator because how often do we know that we have a mission like we were just talking about with Johnny? Do we know that we have a destination, someplace we're getting to, but we have a hard time waiting and holding out for yeah. what we're supposed to be 
exiting or entering into. And with every time those doors open, it's almost more enticing. Like, no, 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 but I can get out of here and I can run down the steps. I mean, I can still technically get there and I might get there a little faster, right? right? So often we are like, well, let's find a new solution. Let's find a new way. Or maybe this is the right way. Maybe this elevator's not gonna get there and I need to go another way. And I think the key in that is the listening. Probably the key is probably not as much showering with your socks on. I don't know that that's the key. (laughs) But the key is in the listening. For every door that you see opening in front of you, pause. Before you run through, before you charge right on, pause and and see if you feel the peace of the Holy Spirit. Pause, pray, ask the Holy Spirit for revelation. Is this my door or is the guy behind me supposed to go through this door? Do I need to get out of the way? Just like when you're in the elevator, you gotta get out of the way sometimes, let people out, right? Don't stand in front of someone else's mission. If it's not yours, get out of the way and let them walk through the door that belongs to them. Really good. Really good. Good word, Pastor Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You introduced Pastor Desiree. So next to him is his lovely, lovely wife who is actually on our team as the pastor of ministries. So she handles all of the, she is the oversight to the kids and the youth and the men's and the women's ministries here at Hope City. And she's incredible. We have known them for a lot of years, but this is a woman of preparation. She's the woman of the orange slice. So she's a woman you want in your family. She's a woman you want on your team. She's a woman you want running next to you because she is all about the preparation and seeking the Lord for what his plan is. She is incredible, but I know she also has some incredible insight and wisdom to share as well. So um, I'll I'll continue a beach story. This one is just a few years later than the one he was saying, and the kids are 11 and eight. So Isaac's 11 and Hannah's eight years old, and we arrived at the beach this time, and it's dark. So instead of heading to the beach, we're like, you know, let's just go to the lazy river. Let's do something because they were not happy with just staying in the hotel. We just wanted to rest. We just did that long drive, but to them, they had to do something. So we're like, okay, for 30 minutes, let's go go to the lazy river and then we'll go out to eat and enjoy food and do all that fun stuff. Time for red lobster. Yes, all oh, the, yeah. all the fun stuff. So we go there and it's no just easy lazy river. It's super fun. The kids have been there year after year cuz it's the same hotel that we go to every year. Yes. And so they know this lazy river. It has tons of inner tubes and big foam cars and it's just a ton of fun. And so they played for about 30 minutes and honestly, I'm getting a little hungry. He's finding us a place to eat and so we let the kids know, "All right, one more lap and then we have to go." And I don't know about you, But my kids, when I say something like that, something happens on the inside of them and they just have to like crank it up a notch. Yeah. One more lap is like go absolutely bananas. Uh Uh-huh. And all you got. Yeah. One last time. That's kind of what happened. So uh, lazy rivers, you know, are a little gritty on the bottom. So you don't slip because you need to be able to get in and out. And it just has this constant current that happens. Well, Isaac is about halfway through that last lap and his inner tube flips over. He goes head first. His feet are stuck out the top and his forehead catches the bottom and slides across. So in that moment, our vacation changed and everything changed. And when he got up, his forehead was just covered in blood and... Uh, We had a lot of emotions in that moment. Uh, One was feeling so bad for him because he's like now injured and he's hurting. Another one was like, can we even go in the ocean now or a shark's gonna be attracted to him because he's got blood on him. It's a real thing. I have to think about these things. It's a real thing. I don't know. Preparation, see what I mean? Right there. (laughs) Making a plan. And, and I know that, you know what, in two weeks, I'm futuristic, in two weeks he starts middle school, it's a new school, he's gonna have this big scab on his forehead, I've got all these things running through my mind. So we go to the ER, they check him out, he's fine, but it's a little bump in the road. It's gonna change our vacation a little bit because they're like, you know, you really shouldn't get it too wet, he's gonna need to keep a Band-Aid on it, kind of keep out of the sun. Okay, well that's kind of why we were here on this whole entire vacation, so... We may have had the conversation. Should we just like go home? Like just scrap the whole thing. We'll start over again next year and let's just go home. But I'm glad we didn't choose that. 
I'm glad we stayed. We had to make a pivot in our vacation. We maybe did a little bit more of putt putt yeah. than we did of Inside the things of that we had. times. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. and the things that we had planned for. But it's in those moments where we have a choice of what we're going to choose. And choosing joy is what we decided to do. We decided to choose joy in that moment because you know what? Stuff's gonna happen. Yep. Stuff's gonna happen in life. Trials are gonna happen. Things are gonna come up. Even, even though you're on vacation, you still bring your whole family with you and stuff can still happen and kids yeah. can argue and, and things can, can go wrong. But at the end of the day, it's so important that we, we choose joy. We make that example that, you know what? I'm still gonna choose joy. I'm still gonna lean on the Lord because I'm expecting him to meet us here. I'm expecting this time to so still good. be good yeah. for our family. I, and we were in your life during that time and I remember us even hearing like, even in the midst of it literally changing everything. Y'all saved money, you went all the way there, and you literally couldn't be in the sun, you couldn't go to the beach, couldn't get sand in that, I mean, it was a mess. And you guys had so much joy in the middle of it, and you still talk about it. Your kids still made memories in the middle of it. Because you could have hired care.com and said, hey, somebody else is watching you. Mom and dad, I've looked up Yelp. There's that a thing? Buffet. That's awesome. We're gonna be heading to. But you had so much joy in it. And because of joy that was in it, it actually... God replaced that frustration, that brokenness with strength. And I think that's key because all of us can find pessimistic approaches to everything that we're going through. We can write off entire moments as a waste of time and dismiss moments. We've talked about this before. You can be a thermostat or a thermometer. Your kids, that could have marked them for the rest of their lives. Like I remember mom and dad were so mad because of my bad choice of scraping my face <laughs> against the bottom of the lazy river. Or you guys pivoted and because you did, Write that down if you're taking down notes. Write down, count it all joy. Yeah. Even in the middle of the storms and the trials and the situation you're facing. Because how many of you guys all know we're gonna go through some stuff? Yep. We have to count it all joy. Yep. We have to. Because in the midst of the messiness, God will still provide what we need. Right, and I think sometimes it's easy for us to look at um, other people and say, well, she looks smiley. That was probably easy for her to do. It's probably easy for her to just count it all joy in the middle of all of it, in the middle of a ruined, long-planned-out vacation. But I think the key in it is the understanding that it was the motto of which they live by, and I love this motto. That motto is that life is about, it's about the moments. It's about making memories in the moments. And those moments are not always exactly as we plan them, but we still have the moments. So what do we do with them? We still have the opportunities to have joy and find joy and celebrate one another in the midst of the moments that maybe we don't love, but we can still be together and do it. And when we choose that perspective, God will work it all out for our good. They still came back from their vacation with incredible stories, incredible fun. Isaac was able to laugh at the big Band-Aid he had slapped on his forehead. And they were able to say, God showed up, he was with us, and we enjoyed our time together. They kept their eyes on Jesus, and God turned it all around. Count so it all good. joy, Count so all good. Joy. And Love we were it. able to spin that story. I was able to tell people that Isaac got in a fist fight with a walrus. I mean, it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And you may see, some of you may be like, I know, but look how poised and proper, and I'm sure she was just, listen, show up, blow her bangs out of the way, it fights you, <laughs> yeah. okay? She is... I mean, she is, they are not just all poised and proper. The truth is, we in our humanity, we have to make the choice in the moment. We don't always all get it right, but in that moment, we're proud of you guys. You made the right decision. Give it up for the Neff family. We love you. A blessing. Who's next? We are going to welcome Miss Bethany Gambino to the stage. Gambino! Join us. You rival the best hair on, in the whole, on the whole staff. Gosh. Uh, if I think so, True. give it up. I mean, I'm super envious of your hair, and I feel like you're a little selfish for not donating some to me. My uncle used to always say, "Just give me five percent," because he was balding. Just a little also. in the back, oh, just, <laughs> just like a mullet. Just give him some tendrils. Just a little bit. He would love that. It yeah. would be fantastic. So on to Bethany. Bethany is our lead film producer here at Hope City, and she is incredible, yes. She is, incredible. 
She is incredible. So when we see the stories of life change, she is one of the ones that sits behind the camera and pulls out the purpose in the story and pulls out the details of what it was that God was doing in your life or what it was that God has done. And Bethany is a deep well of um, her heart for Jesus, her desire to see um, nearness amongst herself and all of us to the heart of God. So we wanted her to share something that was on her heart specifically today. So what is it that you would like to share? Yeah, so I love stories. I love a good story. And so mine goes back to the end of 2020. And I was, um, I was due to upgrade my car. I was driving a 2009 Honda Civic with 260,000 miles oh, on Honda. it. Honda. Let's go Honda I, quality. I love a good Honda. And um, I had just moved into, into Houston. And I was like, all right, I need to upgrade. And so um, I, was, I was thinking, all right, I'll give myself like, you know, a month to find something I liked. And, uh, and so end of 2020, everything was like selling so, so fast. And I would go test drive a car, and then two days later, like, oh, I'm sorry, we sold it. And so I was just getting so frustrated with, like, with the process of, you know, going to different dealerships. And, um, and so they would try to, like, cut me a deal. And, and so then in the middle of that, just, like, you know, feeling like, man, can I ever find a car? <laughs> um, the Lord just said, like, hey, pray for what you want. And, um, and he knew what I wanted. And he said, pray for a 2017 Honda Civic, black with a sunroof. Like nice. very, okay. very specific. And Others so, are like, she was praying for a G-Wagon. She's like, <laughs> I need a 2020 G-Wagon. Oh but it's fine, gosh. we'll go with a 17 Honda Civic. 2017 like, Honda Civic. And so all along, that's, that's what I really wanted. And so, um, and so I'm like trying to find this car. It, it feels like a needle in a haystack, you know? And so I would go test drive cars and they would like lack one detail of what the Lord had said. And um, I couldn't settle, I couldn't compromise because that's what he said to pray for. And so I end up taking to Facebook Market of all places. And some of you are probably like, oh my gosh, car shopping on Facebook Market. But I'm not it endorsing is, it, but that was, a, this is her story. Just go with a friend. My story. Just go with a friend. My story, with my brother, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I thought I had my settings set to like Houston only as I was looking for a 2017 black Honda Civic with the sunroof. And so um, I, I find one and I start messaging the sweet lady and um, she's actually selling it for her parents. And so we start messaging and then I realize that the car is actually in San Antonio. And I'm like, oh gosh, like four hour drive to go test drive this car. Like, Lord, I don't know. And, and she went to the Alamo. I mean, this whole thing is <laughs> I went to the Alamo. Working yeah. out. <laughs> Not quite. And so, um, and so we were messaging and we were trying to like coordinate our schedules for about a solid month. And I'm thinking, there's no way this lady's gonna save this car for me. She said she had other people interested in the car. And so, but, but she was like, I really want you to see it first for some reason. And so after a month of coordinating schedules, we end up driving two hours each one way to meet in the middle. Did you meet at a Bucky's? We did. <laughs> That was a guess. He didn't know that. That was a guess. <laughs> Y'all cheer for that. You're you like. You can make friends over beaver nuggets. Yeah. It's so true. I'm so you. true. All the way down I 10, my brother goes with me. And I'm like, the night before, I was just like so nervous. I was so nervous that this would not work out. I would inconvenience them driving two hours one way. And if I didn't like the car, like, that's a whole day, you know? And so the Lord just kept saying like, do you trust me? And so I had to discern the peace of God in the midst of my fear. So that is a tricky, that, that's a tricky place, but you have to discern the peace of the Lord. And he just kept saying like, do you trust me? And so, um, and so we meet, I see it from a distance and I'm like, I love it. And, uh, and my brother like, you know, test drives it with me and he's like, Bethany, this is, this is a good car. And so I ended up paying for it. They hand me the title, I drive off. And not the end of the story, though. Um, just before I had gotten home after two hours on the road, the lady messaged me, and she said, hey, I think, um, I know this is really random, but um, Facebook Market had me do some kind of survey whenever I had listed the, the car as sold. And I, I somehow ended up on your profile, 
and I saw your work, and I saw your brother's work, and what I had just posted two days prior was a story from our youth, and he was actually, it was a story that we played back in 2020, and he was suicidal, and he was just about to end his life whenever the Lord met him. Wow. And she said, it's been a really hard year, and I had no idea that the people I would meet today would give me hope again. Come on. So good. That's so good. And so I was just like, the Lord reminded me in that moment, don't settle, don't settle for anything less than what he said. Compromise, don't settle, it's not worth it because there's always someone else's life waiting on the other side of your obedience. I love that. So That's a powerful line. There's always someone waiting on the other side of your obedience because to you, God answered, and I think this is key, he granted the desire of your heart. You were specific, you were intentional, you prayed. 2017, Black Honda Civic, it was what you wanted. But realizing that when God moves on this earth, he uses people. And so yes, he granted the desire of your heart, but you also got in the way of somebody's storm and pointed them to the one that could heal and, yeah. and restore and make them whole and give them hope. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. So good. One thing I love, I don't know if y'all will see this or not, but each of these stories and testimonies have not been orchestrated by us. These were theirs. We felt led to hand select each of these individuals and ask them what was on their hearts. And I don't know if you hear a theme or an echo throughout here, but not only has her story echoed the heart of Johnny's story about remembering that we are on a mission to bring people with us and to share the hope and the love of Jesus with them, but it also echoes the story of the Nefs in the fact that we should not stop or give up on something that we feel like like God spoke to us just because another opportunity came along first. She was insistent that God spoke this to me. I still have peace on this. I'm holding on to that peace. I'm frustrated in this process because I wanted that car a lot faster, 260,000 miles any moment. She could have been done and on the side of the road, just like the Dukes were about to be. Pastor Ork wow. and his All family. of this ties together. <laughs> Full what circle, kind of car was that? He was like 2017 Honda. I was like, whoa. But I love it. I love it because it is in the persistence of waiting and patience and faith on God to move on what he said. It's not our job. It's his job to pull together what he promised. And he did in the most wonderful way. Not only did she get the car she wanted, but she also got to recognize that without even speaking it, her life reflected hope to someone oh, so else. Good. So powerful. Give it up for Bethany. Love that it. was amazing. Love it. Thank you, Bethany. So good. And last but not least, can we give it up for Pastor Sean Perry? Let's go. Let's go. Pastor Sean and Delisa, y'all are such a gift to the house. You've been literally, you're like day ones. You've been here, OGs, seven years you and your wife, Delisa, uh, right now, Cinco is, is losing their minds because yeah, Pastor should, Sean and Cinco. Delisa are our Cinco campus pastors. Yeah. So give it up one more time. You're a gift to the house. All right, tell us your story. Now, I do have to say this. I know you're like, uh, we're in beard competition. One of, one of you said that, I believe. Lots of people were saying that. <laughs> James Harden left. He's like, I'm the beard, but... So I've, I've actually been out and people thought that I was James Harden. <laughs> I love and, that. And, like, you get free food though. <laughs> no, because I'm such a just honest guy. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not. And I'm like, he's a little bit taller than me, yeah. you know? And your he life has smiled. way more character. Okay, keep just going. Smile. Here we go. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right, Pastor Sean. All right, so I'm from born and raised Houston, Texas. I'm away. Uh, Johnny Lou back there. Yes, yes, yes. And so when you mentioned Galveston, I know y'all love Galveston. Galveston, no Galveston. But I'm from Houston. about it. Mm, but when I think of Galveston, I think of brown water. I think of, <laughs> right? I think of It's seaweed. a great divide. It's fine. You know, Can I you think of murky. Can you just say murky? Uh, just murky. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Galveston. I'm sorry, Galveston. But if you know, you know you're from Houston, right? So at least Pastor Oric, you know, you're out in Florida. I'm sure you saw some, some good sand, some good water. Myrtle whoa, Beach. Whoa. What, 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 keep going. We love Galveston, but keep we, going. We do, yeah. we do. Myrtle Beach, is, on you, you said it's, uh, right? And so my wife tells me, she says, hey, we have a family function that we have to go to, and it's out in Galveston. Mm. 
And so I'm like, Galveston? I'm like, you know, could we not just go to somebody's backyard and, you know, have a barbecue and have a pool or something, right? Closer. And so I'm like, Galveston. And so her father, my, my father-in-law was like, hey, man, it'll be great. Just keep going. Just keep going a little further out. I'm like, a little further out for more brown water and seaweed. Great. And so we're traveling out there, and I hit the seawall, and it's crowded and everything. And I'm looking at the GPS, and it says I have 30 more minutes to go. I'm like, what, what, what's going on? And so as I keep going further out, as we keep going further out, I notice that the water starts to turn. It starts to turn from brown to uh, a blue-green-ish color. A blue-brown. Blue-brown. Blue blue, you know, it's, it's, you, you know. can't eliminate the brown. <laughs> you can't. Right. Brown, brown, brown. And, and the sand is white sand. Whoa. I'm like, what? Did you, what? Were you on somebody's private beach? N no, oh. I wasn't, you know? And I was like, okay, what's going on? And so we pull up and we get to the, to the beach and it, it's not crowded. We didn't have to, you know, fight for spots or anything. We sit, sit Where up. Where were you? What part? Like, do, Jamaica do I, Beach? Do I, is it's just Jamaica, Jamaica Beach, Beach, yes. It's like, do you share that or, you know? No, we want to keep it quiet. Yeah, we do want to keep it quiet, you know. Jamaica, my man. And you just keep going a little further yeah. out, too, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but Jamaica Beach is great. I recommend that you go get you uh, a, a property out there or something. It's great, right? So we're out there on the beach. I'm enjoying it. I got my, my, my girls uh, with me, my son, my family. We're just enjoying, enjoying the sun, the breeze. It was phenomenal. And so uh, we're out, we're, we're in the water, just chilling out, maxing, you know, relaxing all cool. Relax. Yeah, chilling, you know? some b-ball <laughs> outside of the school. Uh, yeah, uh, so, you know, I'm sorry. And so uh, we're just really enjoying it. I got the peace, I got joy. I didn't think about anything. I just really enjoyed the moment. And my father-in-law comes and he says, hey man, it's time to go. We had been out there for hours, y'all. And I didn't even know, time just flew. And I'm like, the kids, I'm like, oh, man, like, do we, do we really have to go? Like, you know, so I'm packing my stuff up, and the kids are pouting, I'm pouting. But what I was reminded of, I was reminded of Luke 5, chapter 4. And so Jesus tells Simon, he says, go out into the deeper, go out deeper and cast your nets, and you'll pull up some fish. And so just to give you a little context about that, they had been fishing all night. All night long, they had been fishing, and they caught nothing, nothing. Kind of like, you know, James Harden trying to get, you know, a, a championship. Okay, just, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, he's not in Houston anymore. He left this us. This did okay? not. This was the turn of the James Harden bashing moment. No, it's but not. I'm sorry, you know. You are right. Keep going. Um, and so they caught nothing. And so Simon, he was like, well, all right, we'll go out deeper. And I love that the NLT says, go out a little deeper, a little deeper and cast their nets, and so they did. And they caught more fish than they could ever imagine. The, the nets actually broke, and the boat could hardly contain the amount of fish that they had. And so the point to take away from here, if you're, if you're listening, um, you wanna take notes here. If you're watching online, you wanna take notes. The point is, when, we, when God calls us out into the deep, we want, and, and out into the deep and into the uncomfortable, yeah. right? We just have to trust him. Yeah. We have to trust him. If I wouldn't have experienced that, I wouldn't have been uh, experienced the, just the, the ocean. The, I wouldn't have known Galveston was like that, to be yeah. honest with you. And I, would, I would, wouldn't have been able to be here and tell y'all, hey, you were right about Galveston. And I wouldn't have to look at y'all like, are you serious? And then, <laughs> you know, but when we're uncomfortable and when we are like, man, are, are we really, are we really going to do this? Sometimes call, God calls us out to a place where we might have already been, where we might have, might, we might have uh, said that maybe, you know, this is, a, this is a dead end. God, why are you calling me out here? You know, we just have to trust him and know that he has a, perf a, 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 a perfect plan and, and a purpose for us. And you just preached about this a couple of weeks ago, how there's purpose in the uncomfortable, because I'm sure... I'm sure that the fishermen are looking at Jesus saying, we, we've already fished out there before. Right? Yeah. Like, we've already done all of this. And you're showing up, not a fisherman by, by, by nature, by trade. And you're trying to tell me to go do something that I already know better. Right. They could have disregarded or dismissed it. But instead, they followed through and went into the deep where it was uncomfortable 
and God provided a harvest that was not only a blessing to them, but a blessing to the region and to the community. So for you, uh, you could have missed out on so many moments and memories yes. and family moments with your kids and your father-in-law and everything if you would have just written off Galveston. So the moral of the story, this is not spiritual, don't write off Galveston. Yes. Y'all, that, is the, that is the big takeaway. You may end up with a rash. I like it. <laughs> I don't like the rash. You may end up with a rash, but don't give up on Galveston. That's Amen. So I, think we should write good. That down. I love it. Amen. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. I love that. It's such a good, a good lesson. Just keep listening. Keep seeking God. Keep trusting him. Yes. You don't know what it's like where God is asking you to go. You so see good. right here. Mm. And what you see right here, you may be saying, I don't like it. But God is calling you to something more. So just keep going. Just keep going. Look at the person next to you and so say, good. just keep going. Give it up for Pastor Sean. Thank Pastor you so much. Pastor Sean. Love y'all. So good. So I've told a story. They've all told stories. I think you should tell a story. Well, I do believe that I have one last piece to the puzzle. Um, and it's, of course, a beach story, right? Wow. How many of you guys like the beach? Let's just, let's just deal with that now. How many of y'all are like, I'm not into the beach at all. Like, that's not my thing. So I like to rent the umbrella and sit under the umbrella in the shade. I was not raised on the beach, but it's okay. We do the beach a little differently in the Groves family, as in he does it a little differently than the rest of us do it. But he comes along and sits under his umbrella and watches us, and that's fantastic. Yeah. But um, I believe there's one more piece to this puzzle today. Um, and, and in that, it's a little bit of a funny story of ours. And it was a beach story. This was, goodness, um, our oldest is, he was probably around six, so it's maybe about seven years ago. We were at the beach in Florida, and we had, we had all set ourselves up. So we only had two kids then, I believe, or we had two kids and a baby. That's what it was. And our two big little kids were out right on the edge of the water. We, you know, we're, we're very safe, very cautious with water. So they were out just on the edge of the water, and we were sitting not too far back with our baby, and both Pastor Daniel and myself were awake and playing with the baby and watching the other two. And there was a moment where I have a baby, okay? So I'm tired, and at one point, I knew he was watching our now six-year-old Daphne when she was a baby, and not meaning to, I, I dozed off for a moment. And I, I might even have been sitting up, like I was just sitting there, and I fell asleep for a moment. Anybody ever been there? You're just so tired. Relate. You fell asleep and you're like, oh my goodness. And I literally jerk awake in that moment. Like, oh my goodness, I fell asleep. And when I had closed my eyes, my six-year-old son, my seven-year-old son, was sitting just right on the water's edge, just sitting there. And when I closed my eyes, that was the last thing that I saw. And when I opened my eyes, startled, he was no longer there. And I panicked. And in that moment, I did not pause, look around, ask where I was, see what was going on. Anybody ever wake up disoriented? Yeah, I woke up very disoriented in that moment. And I hopped up off the ground and I started screaming, Bracken! Bracken! And I'm running at the water because in my mind, he's gone under the water. I didn't realize I'd fallen asleep and I am charging to save my boy. And as I'm running, I'm still disoriented. So I literally trip when I hit the water. I fall in the water. I'm bleeding as I'm getting out of the water. Like, where is my son? Where is my son? My husband is back at our seats going, babe. It's just right down there. It's just right there. <laughs> Honey, Brecken is right there. She ran in that water like a bootleg Navy SEAL. Just... <laughs> Scraped up, walked back up. I said, Whoa, G.I. Jackie. <laughs> you, she couldn't hear anything. There was a beach full of people looking at me like, what? What's the matter with her? What? What just happened? Because I'm charging, screaming a child's name at nothingness, falling, rolling. And everyone is looking at me like, is she okay? And my sweet son was literally like skipping down the beach this way. And my husband had been watching him the whole time. And the thing that the Lord reminded me in that moment is something that he reminds me of often, and that is that too often I think we forget about the people that God has positioned in our lives to walk with us. 
and we think that we are on our own and have to carry the weight all by ourselves. And when a ball is dropped, we're the only one that can run after and fix it. And we have to do it all perfectly and we have to get it all right. And there's nothing that we can miss because I've got this. But so often God's like, I I placed someone in your life for you to count on, for you to rely on, to trust that they're there, that will hold up your arms. Ecclesiastes 4 says two are better than one. We are better together because if one falls, the other one is there to pick them up. So good. And I believe sometimes the thing that we need reminded of is that you are not alone. So good. There are people surrounding you in your life that when you have the moment where the great adventure turns so not great, trust in the Lord and trust in the people that he's positioned in your life as well. Because you don't always have to be the best version of yourself. There are gonna be moments. That was not my greatest moment when I got up from the beach bleeding like, wow, I look like a crazy person in this moment. Wasn't my most proud moment because I didn't look to the person on my left that had my back. I dozed off because I knew he was watching my children. He was watching our kids. I should let him have them too sometimes, but (laughs) that moment they were his responsibility. (laughs) But we have to trust the Lord for the people that he's positioned. Make sure those people that are in your life are people that God has positioned. That's so good. be my challenge. Come on, did y'all get something out of today? With every eye closed just for a moment, here are our additional seating, Cinco, Woodlands, online, Tanzania, our watch parties. God, today, we just thank you. There was nuggets that were spoken. There were people that had revelation and uh, trusted voices in our house. And God, even some of the things, God, that I believe you led uh, Jackie and I to share today. God, I pray today that none of it just fell on uh, ears that didn't hear, God. But today, God, I thank you that you gave us a mind ready to uh, just kind of receive it in a heart ready to understand and let it shape us, let it mold us. And maybe there's somebody today that they were just like, you know, the truth is I, I, I can relate to that moment. I can't really relate to that moment. But at the end of the day, God, there is somebody that is in our corner and it's you. Jesus, more than ever, we need you. In a time where our country is divided, in a time where things feel uncertain, Jesus, we need you. If you're here today, maybe you're listening to the sound of my voice, you're watching online, you're in one of our locations, you say, Daniel, Jackie, the truth is, I came today because I need hope, and I got a little bit of that today. The truth is, I need to trust God even when I can't track him, but I don't know him as my savior, but I want to. Maybe the second invitation, you say, the truth is, I used to walk with Jesus, but I got caught up in the prodigal life, and I've been living reckless, and today's the day I wanna rededicate my life to Jesus. If you're either one of those invitations, when I count to three across all of our campuses, specifically here at West Houston and both of our rooms today, if you're here and you say, Daniel, I wanna give my life to Jesus, I wanna rededicate. One, you're talking about me today, I need a savior. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. I need to make things right with Jesus because I'm just not getting through life that well on my own. I need a savior that can navigate and lead me. I love the stories today about how he is concerned about the intricacies and the details of my life. I need a savior that will walk with me. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. Here, additional seating. You're talking about me, I see your hand. Hands are popping up, amazing. Come on, let's give it up for every person that said today's my day, today is my day. Hey, will you pray this prayer across all locations, watching online, say Jesus, It's me. I've been living for me, and it's not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. Forgive me for all my sins. I repent for all my issues. I believe you died on the cross for me, even though I didn't deserve it. And then on the third day, you came back from the grave to give me freedom, to give me hope. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, amen.